Hi everyone, welcome to Third Coast Gaming Impressions. Today is August 23rd, it is episode 40. Hello, my name is Travis Doyle and I'm joined by my co-host and wonderful friend Austin Taylor. Hey ya. I'm here. I made it. He made it. He's here. We got some... I wouldn't call it breaking news because it happened like fucking three hours ago. But those, uh, that Netflix show. I thought this is the Cowboy Bebop thing that's coming to um, Netflix. Netflix. I was like, November. is this a movie? But it's a 10 episode show. And I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah like they've been, like they, this, the first news of this hit like a while ago, right? I think we've known about this show for years, but it just, it's always been one of these things that I never thought was actually going to like materialize. And knowing that this comes out, I think, like, in November 19th is... Yeah, really soon. Yeah, it's it's really soon, yeah. And they just released um the first set of, like, cast images. Which I will say that the it's um it's John Cho, Daniela Pineda, and Mustafa Shakir. And they have the shot of them on the couch, and I'm like, oh my god, this fucking set looks really good. And these yeah. costumes look really good. Yeah, like, notably, it doesn't look like they're bringing in... Because there's a fourth, like, person on the Bebop, right? There's that kid. Yeah, and she's not there, but I think the dog is there. Yeah, like, they yeah, they cast Ayn. Yeah. Um, they had, the, like, a whole, like, video that was, a, that was a GoPro of, um, of, like, that dog running through the studio. Um, but, yeah, the kid, I don't... I think it's like I haven't watched enough Cowboy Bebop. I don't know if I actually got into that character. Yeah, I can't remember her name. She's pretty early on in the show. I I remember, man, I was good old adult swim times when they were running the show nonstop. Like they'd finish the season, start over and stuff. I oh, seen it, I was like, dead. oh cool, they got an Asian American to play a uh, Spike, and then I realized it was John Cho, and I was like, holy shit, it's fucking Harold. Oh yeah, from Harold and Kumar, or is it Kumar? I think it's Harold. They're interchangeable at this point, like <laughs> Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Yeah, I, I, I was going to say, yeah, <laughs> I was going to say Sulu from the Star Trek reboot, but like, yes, which I I love those Star Trek reboots. I thought he was a great Sulu. Oh I mean, yeah, the first like, he's and the third great. one at least. Yeah, like no, he's he's really good. Like him in the suit. Like I think. Like, there are times, that, like, the image where, like, he looks like he just he's walking out of a gunfight that took place in a church. I will say the suit looks a bit too neat. But, like, aside from that, I think, generally speaking, uh, he's got the look down. Yeah, the suit's really good, especially in the shot with him and his headphones. And he's got the pop collar. Oh, yeah. yeah I mean, he has it in the other one, but you can, you can kind of see it more. Yeah, it's, it looks fucking rad. Can't wait. Ten episodes good shit that's that's the stuff i like i don't i don't want like a two and a half hour thing i want to i want to live with these characters for a little bit so that's a good time yeah and i think like jets like sort of design here is good i think Faye, like i've i've seen like mixed reactions to Faye's like specifically like the pants Faye is wearing but like i think it's a good update for Faye's uh original outfit in the series which was uh not much of anything yeah, so that stuff is pretty cool. Um, we're we're gonna get into some games. Talk about some games we played, and then after that, we will have it. We'll have a separate podcast. If you're listening to this, we're gonna talk about rebuild of Ava three and four, the Neon Genesis Seven Galleon movies. So that'll be a that'll be a time. Yeah, that'll be a moment. Um, I okay. So Psychonauts two comes out tomorrow. And I've been kind of playing the first Psychonauts for the last two or three weeks, just on and off. So it's on Game Pass. And this, I think Psychonauts 1 came out in like 2004, I can't remember. That's like my first Tim Schafer game and kind of got me into like his weird comedy and kind of how fun like Double Fine games are. 2005. Yeah. So that's been a good time. Have you played the first Psychonauts? I, I think I played like 20 minutes of the first Psychonauts four years ago i own it i've downloaded it onto my ps4 pretty recently but i have not touched it i will say the um when this game originally came out it ran very well on the xbox because i think that's what they're making on first and i have that ps4 version as well and that's the ps2 port which is 
kind of bad. It's a little laggy and it's framey. Oh. So I got it on the Xbox with Game Pass, and it's like, oh, this this plays better. The frame rate's better already, and like, it looks a little nicer too. I think there's like some up scaling that the there's kind of in the backwards compatibility wheelhouse of that game, and the art style, like it's it's got the art style and the music for some of the stuff is very heavily like Tim Burton inspired, I will say, <laughs> or at least that like '90s like graphic novel looking stuff. And, like, the music, yeah, like, you feel like there's hits of, like, Beetlejuice or, like, Corpse Bride stuff in there, too. Very, like, whimsical, fun. Yeah, like, it's kind of like a game that's, like, character. It's like it's like someone, like, throughout the idea of proportions. Yeah, yeah. Very stylized, like, those kind of, like, you look at a lot of, like, Tim Burton's drawings and, like, a lot of characters from the animated stuff and the stop motion stuff and it does look like that which so psychonauts one it's yeah it's raz you're a guy from you're kind of you're a kid from a family who like runs a circus and you leave to go to a psychic camp where the psychonauts are who are kind of like 60s inspired like spy yeah heroes pretty much g-men so they have a camp where they basically train psychics it's kind of like a summer camp. So you have your hub world, which is the summer camp. And the first level you're in, you're in like a boot camp of the back of someone's head. And then you then you leave and you go and you run around the camp. And you're kind of hopping around. You do like your second training course is in another character's head who you're trying to learn how to do your Psy Blast, which is like one of the first abilities you kind of pick up. I think it's... I'm trying to remember what his name was. I think it was Agent 9 or something. But I think one of the cool... I love the voice actors in this. Like, the guy who did Invader Zim is the voice of Raz as well. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard that. I, like, I'm sure, like, even if people don't know the name of that voice, like, actor, they've definitely heard him. Like, I think of that voice actor, first and foremost, for whatever reason, as Rodney from the Cartoon Network show Squirrel Boy. Oh, of course, of course. I remember that show very well. Terrible show. Yeah, I, I love a lot of the that '90s cartoon shows that were coming out. But um, yeah, so you go into, I think his name is actually Agent Nine. You go into his head, and he's kind of training you on some stuff. And he, his level, you basically have all these weird stylized levels you're going into in people's heads, and you're figuring out how they kind of think, and they're like what i would say their mental like their mental baggage shows up in the games as like suitcases and you pick them up and you're trying to help them and as well as like you're finding memories of like things that have like kind of stuck with them and like uh trying to think what the word is like haunt them kind of yeah like or impacted sort of, them negatively yeah like spook them yes so like family troubles and like like you you see a lot of like um sasha nine's family history and he he is a well-trained psychonaut so his brain is this cube where he's compartmentalized everything Mm -hmm. and you're doing training and you release it by accident so this like baby um bed kind of pops up and you have to hop around it and then a bunch of different things in his past kind of hops up so you're learning about him and then you go into another character's head who is a kind of flower child kind of girl and she's another teacher and she gives you this orb and it's like it's this weird race level that's almost like a sonic racing level where you're going down this really long track and it's it's got this like blaring kind of music going at you while you're doing it it's very stylized and it looks like all those like weird 60s commercials of people dancing and stuff and then you find out she once worked at an orphanage and the orphanage burned down and so the memories of those children haunt her and a pushed back part of her brain in this room you go to where there's a bunch of like children who are kind of screaming and it's very weird i remember seeing that room as a kid and it was very weird and then you're after you get out of that, you figure out there's something weird going on in the camp. Like kids are getting kidnapped, and 
there's stuff going on with brains and it just kind of goes from there i think i'm only halfway through because there's like two parts of this game there's the stuff in the camp and then there's some other stuff after that that's pretty interesting but yeah it's been very nostalgic and this game is fast like once you get that bouncy ball you have like a uh uh, like movement options that are faster than your normal run speed so you can kind of bounce around levels and it you can hover with it like you'll put it above your head and you can hover down to a spot and then you can throw it back down to below your feet and you're like running on top of it pretty much and you have a bunch of other powers you unlock throughout the game you get them from levels and you're also kind of like leveling up raz by picking up cards so you get one that's like telekinesis pyrokinesis invisibility and then some other ones so it's fun you're going into seeing a lot of people's like like it's weird the game inadvertently gets into talking about people's mental health which is not what they started with the game but it's how they ended up and the way they wrote those levels yeah and talking about going in people's brains like that's the stuff that comes up yeah like i think there's a actually a pretty recent interview on like Vice, I think, where Schaefer's just like, yeah, we kind of just stumbled into that whole aspect of the game. And that's the stuff that really works. Because you start... I'm going to spoil it because we're kind of talking yeah. about this game. Because you go to like a mental asylum at one point and there's three patients. And you end up helping them get over these things that are a part of them. Like one of them has a personality disorder where they think they're Napoleon. Um, there's this other guy who thinks he's a milkman and he's fucking out of it and it's like one of the best levels because it's like this weird secret agent thing where you have operatives coming up and you're saying are you the milkman i am the milkman are you the milkman we have to deliver the milk and it's just this weird fucking level where you're in this like 50s suburbia like anti-communist state all that kind of stuff going on and then there's like a matador who i can't remember too well but i think he's afraid of bulls and it's it does the thing a lot of other games go into where when you get into someone's head, it'll turn it change the art style completely. Like the matador guy, you come, you go into it painted in all these matador colors, and the whole art style is like in neons and blacks, and it's really interesting. So I'm gonna I'm gonna finish this. Comes out to Game Pass tomorrow, so I'm gonna start two. I've been hearing a lot of people are like, "Oh, this game is really cool." It like. Barrett Courtney from Kind of Funny Games was talking about he has like 19 hours in it and he's almost done 100%ing it and I'm really curious what this will end up being like I I think this series is cool and has a lot of platforming stuff I really like so yeah well, I think like the second one is receiving pretty like positive reviews like all around the board yeah and the I, I love the new art style for two I will say that like having it on like these current gen consoles have like i mean the ga- the other game is old and it looked cool but having it at what they're doing with the current consoles and playing with it, it they've made it look more like stop motion stuff and those kind of like puppets from like burton stuff so i'm excited to get into it i'm sure there's a lot of weird stuff they do and like there's some teeth stuff was like oh that's kind of fun and weird yeah like I think that was relatively famous because I think they, I think they like they plan out, but I think they they did add like some sort of content content warning for that aspect of the game. Yeah, because they were they were showing it off to at an event and someone had a really bad reaction to it. And then I haven't seen any of their levels for that game either, so I'm I'm pretty ready to like go into it. That's my second awesome moment. <laughs> I would recommend it if you ever get back to it. It's fun. It's short. You could probably... I got through half of that game in, like, four hours. Well, I mean, you know, what you told me about the PS4, like, port, you know, um, they'll probably... That's probably just another reason to get back into Game Pass as soon as I can. Yeah, yeah. Or I, I've seen it on sale on PC, on Steam a bunch. I think that's probably the regular Oh, I think the it's on sale one. for, like, 99 cents. Yeah. Like, it's on sale definitely on Humble Bundle right now. Uh, you can buy that first game for like ninety nine cents, and it's probably on sale. On Steam for I think it's worth a dollar. Well. It's worth a dollar. <laughs> yeah, that game's really cool. I I want to rebuy it on Xbox so I can go back and play it because like 
Everything's really fun about it. The dialogue, it's funny. I forgot to say, it's funny. I think it's written really well, like all the Tim Schafer stuff, and it, it plays with, like, I think it's characters or good yeah. interactions and all that. Like it's, and it's the weird. Schaefer, yeah, it's like Schaefer before, like, you know, like the early 2010s sets in, and that's, like, the person who then goes on to make, you know, fucking, uh, like, Brutal Age. Um, yeah. Broken Age? No, Brutal. Well, I mean... Or, the, the one with Jack Black, Brutal, Brutal Legend, Legend. That's the one, yeah. Brutal Legend, so yeah, the Broken Age, and Banger. Brutal. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's okay. Okay, I mean that game has weird stuff where it turns into an RTS, but like I pre-ordered that game. No, <laughs> but, was, but I mean, like, like it's not a. It's it's an eight. It's like a seven or eight. But it's I had like fun time. Maybe in that. a six. Could be. Hey, to Austin, but to Travis, it's an eight in my heart. It's like the metal stuff and. All the Jack Black stuff is fun. I was replaying that last year. That game is interesting. Um, let's see. Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire. What is this, Austin? What did you bring on this list? Well, you know, um, was at a point this week where I needed to clear some space off of my... Um, needed to clear some space off of my SSD. And I was going through all the files. And I was, you know, I was deleting stuff like Battletech um and control which like you know I, I don't play on here but like i still had downloaded for whatever reason um and then when i got to pillars of eternity 2 in my um in my files I was like hmm, i haven't played this game in like two years i don't know if i can justify keeping this downloaded on my relatively like small ssd and use the game itself is you know I, with all the expansions in pillars of eternity 2 is like 52 some odd gigs and you know, instead of deleting it, I decided, what if I started another playthrough? What if I um, beat it so I can delete it later? Yeah, like, so I ended up uh, just starting another playthrough of Pillars of Eternity 2, uh, which is, you know, this sequel to Pillars of Eternity, which is a crowdfunded, isometric uh, RPG, uh, party-based RPG that's based off of the, um, like, old Baldur's Gate, Icewind Dale stuff. Uh, noticeably, like, the like both games were led by uh, Josh Sawyer, who is a veteran of like Icewind Dale. Uh, yeah, and this is like Obsidian is like this is like one yeah. of Obsidian's like big games. Like people yeah, Pillars of Eternity game. is the game that like kept Obsidian open, right? Like the studio would have closed if Pillars of Eternity had not been successful in its kickstarting efforts. Um, you know, and so you know, that first game hits and it keeps Obsidian open. People like sort of hits in the middle of this renaissance for uh, CRPGs. And in, I think, 2018, uh, they make, they release Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire, which is crowdfunded on, like, a weird, like, a different website. Like, not Kickstarter. It's crowdfunded on Fig. Oh, good time which to I think, Fig. Yeah, which I think was made by, like, or, like, a platform made by, like, game developers for, like, game developers, you know? Um and so this one doesn't like hit that kind of that money go like the same amount of like money given to it into like partially because it's a different it's on like a service no one really knows anything about and also um it's a sequel so like you're just gonna get yeah less. apparently on fig it reached its goal within a day yeah it did like it it I hit its goal neat. it's it hit its goal it, it didn't get like as many of like their stretch goals like it it got quite a few including the stretch goal to make like ship to ship combat because the whole like sort of narrative conceit of this game is you are you were a lord of a castle that you built up in the first game uh unfortunately you built the castle on top of a giant statue made of a stone that is capable of containing souls uh and a dead god possesses this statue and upends your entire castle kills everyone oh, no. there almost kills you and you now you got to follow the statue because like the god of death is like hey i want you to figure out what this statue is doing and if you don't i'll just like snap your soul in half you know and send you to oblivion um uh -huh. so now you're on this like swashbuckling adventure across the deadfire archipelago which is a you know an archipelago you know just a, a series of islands that is currently being contested the sort of control over is being contested by a monarchy of like the people who like are native to the archipelago a colonial like two different colonial entities uh one of which is a trading like company the other one is like a the government of a 
land that's like relatively close to the archipelago and then also like a guild of pirates yeah, i got it i like the transit of not just making another like fantasy like castle game where yeah. they're like hey let's do a little got some archipelagos you can hop from you got some ship combat it sounds like yeah. it's like a cool little way to it's mix really, it up in a sequel it's really cool like you know because the first game hits and one of the wildest things in that first game is you get a like you get a companion named Kana, who is a like a tall, like just a huge dude. Um, and you know, you bring him into combat, and the first time reading into combat, it's like, what is what is his weapon? It's a gun. <laughs> this dude has a like has a rifle, and like that's Buck Wild. So like that immediately sets up like Toys of Attorney as this um like kind of like sixteen hundreds uh equivalent like time period. And the way that you build up on that in that second game is you, like, make it a, like, colonial, um, like, a game that, like, is about, like, a, co like, colonial enterprise and piracy, you know? And it's just, it's a really cool fucking video game. It seems cool. It, I, um, I hope at some point after this, the Outer world stuff wraps up to where they're happy with it or, like, they have some side project stuff. Hopefully, a Pillars I, of Eternity three will be a thing. I, I don't know. You know, um, because like the thing about this game is it did not sell very well. It was also not as well, like well received by people who like liked the first game because of like the differences that it like the changes it made and like for instance, um, you know, like, the first game hits and like it's a party based game, right? And you can have like a party of six characters in that first game. In the second game, they cut it down to five. Because it was really hard to combat, it's pretty hard to follow in that first game. So they cut it down to five. Um, like some people didn't like that. The other thing is like the ship combat mini game in this is kind of rough. Like they were iterating on ship combat like well after launch, like to the point where like, I played that game. I picked up Dead Fire pretty late, and they were still making changes to ship combat by the time like before I even finished the game yeah i hope with like the microsoft acquisition and like the rising like popularity of game pass you could see like not even a, like a pillars of eternity 3 or like a shorter side pillars of eternity or just like being able to test out like what like these games and crpgs can do on game pass yeah. either shorter or longer experiences because i think I think these this did come to Xbox. Yeah, it came to yeah, PS4 and on Xbox consoles. One at two years or like a year and a half after uh, it came to PC. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's released. Yeah, um, I don't know because like they've already talked about they talked about Avowed, right? Which is the from what we've seen so far is the kind of like Elder Scrolls like take, right? Is like what if Pillars of Eternity was an Elder Scrolls? Um, so it's going to be like that first person thing. So I don't know if we're going to get like a Pillars of Eternity 3 that is like, is like Dead Fire. I don't know if we're going to get one that's like this party based, um, sort of, yeah, you know, sort of like isometric oh. thing. And, you know, I, I, part of me is like, yeah, I want to see like a, just a straight Pillars of Eternity like 3 because like, you know, like the, where this game goes, it looks at its characters. Cause it has like, it has great companions, you know, like you have just, like a dare who is just like your bud, right? Who's a very like, who's just a very silly dude. Like when you encounter wild animals, there's like a chance that there will be like a interaction before you actually, get, if in case you get into conflict with what with conflict with an animal, um, that he'll just like interact with the animal. And he'll make like noises at it, um, and it's it's very fun. It's he's just like he just wants like an animal pal, which is why like one of the modifiers you can add to a new game plus sort of run is to let a dare have an animal friend okay uh, because cool. you can have animals like your main character can have an animal companion which is not something that operates within combat but is uh, just something that follows your party around so right now i have a i have a uh, sort of ghost pig and the benefit that that ghost pig gives me is that um the sort of the cooldown period between attacks right uh is decreased significantly because this is like i'm playing this in real time with pause mode as opposed to the turn-based mode they added nine months after launch um 
and the things like every attack you do, there's a cooldown for like basic attacks, spells, all that kind of thing. And with that pig, that cooldown is reduced significantly. Yeah, it actually it looks like a uh, Pillars of Eternity two came to like regular console Game Pass in March of this year, which I was like, all right, cool. They yeah, have they, been pushing to put that stuff own, on there. Yeah, yeah, they they own the company now. Like, get that stuff on Game Pass. Yeah. Yeah, as well as the first game. Um, so that's cool. I'm, I I don't think I could ever play these because they are vastly outside of my wheelhouse. But I would definitely watch yeah. someone play these. And I've been I was thinking about playing the other CRPG, the one that's um, all set in one day or set in one city. Um, that was really popular a year or two ago. That kind of like was like this is how CRPG should be made from now on. It's so like, complex. Oh, Disco Elysium. Disco, Elysium. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if, like, Disco Elysium is not, I don't think it's, like, as, it's as, like, I like Disco Elysium. Like, it, it's a good game. I don't think it's, like, the, like, the direction all CRPG should go. Um, I think, like, mechanically, there's always stuff that's interesting, and it kind of takes that format, whereas, like, whereas you know, like, a Pillars is very much an, an homage to uh, these old games. Disco is this kind of, like, we want to take this format, we want to stretch it to its absolute limit. And in a real way, it's, like, for better or worse, you know, because there's, like, Disco is, like, relatively complex in its systems. It doesn't actually tell you a lot of things very well. Um, It's also a game where, like, leveling is weird because of how the dialogue works in that game. You will earn, like, level ups that give you attribute points, but you don't want to actually spend any attribute points until you are about to hit like a uh, like a speech track right so you want to like use those attribute points to like increase your chances or to unlock a speech check after you've like been closed out of it because you failed like it the first time you know it's it's a very specific way of making crpgs and i don't i definitely don't think like i want to play like eight other disco elysiums yeah well that's cool i'm glad to you got to talk about it a little bit because I that those series seem really cool and I've I've always like I watched like Giant Bomb playing some of them and stuff yeah. for their quick looks and I was like oh this is cool I could dip into it a little bit watching someone play it um, some other stuff I played that Fortnite got a imposters update which is very yep. much the uh, the Among Us mode or what's what kind of they I'm trying to think of the other things they call this kind of like imposters or like some stuff used to do it before that anyway you know you know what it is yeah it's like the you know the like among us fundamentally has like a basis in in, like things like werewolf right like card games like werewolf where everyone sits around a circle and it's like a bluff game where you're trying to figure out who's the werewolf and the werewolf is killing people right it's that yeah it's these like social it's these like these social bluff games is like the foundation of among us yeah and i've played them at a bar where we didn't have any we weren't using a game we were just doing it in person and stuff and it's like i think i like these type of games i think they're really interesting um the the Fortnite one it's okay i think it's an interesting way for them to rotate it in so the theme for this season is aliens right now um they had like superman show up they had in the battle pass which i think this battle pass started last month it has rick and morty um it has rick sanchez is in the battle pass at level 100 so you gotta fucking grind for that and then they have like a morty skin that you can buy where he's like in a mech so this came out like a month later um it's uh, the map is pretty similar there's i mean there's been a lot of people talking about how they're you know they could have had a fun thing with among us and had like a little because you know you see them doing this you see them like collabing with stuff but it's it's epic collabs it's you know they they have like the rocket league stuff in it but they kind of went off and did their own thing with the among us stuff well i mean that's how fortnite becomes a thing right like they see a game mode that is doing really well you know player unknowns battle royale or battlegrounds whichever the actual name of that game is um and then they just say like hey what if we did this you know and like this among us thing is kind of an experiment it's kind of a bummer because like the first when they announced this a lot of people who work on among us were like man we would have loved to have done a collab with epic 
Yeah, I think that would have been way better than, like, what this actually is. I wouldn't say this... This copies it very closely, but it's not amazing by any sense. It's just something else for you to do when you're getting in. You know, it's like a... I mean, there's so many people who are playing this. You go from your battle royale, you're taking a break, and you're playing this. Um... To talk about the way it's set up, it's funny because you have all the you have the dumb thing that Fortnite has been doing, where everyone has these fucking skins, and it's this multiverse of just like all these fucking characters showing up. So I, I was having matches where you start out, and it says you're you know you're either the imposter or you're the um, you're the operator. Can't remember exactly the name. And there's like I'm running around the ship with Rick Sanchez and Superman and then like three people playing as like the default skins and shit. Yeah. And it incorporates some of the regular Fortnite stuff into this, which is kind of fun. Like it has you're fixing these certain areas of the ship, like you have to you have to clean off the battle bus at one point because there's a bunch of like graffiti on it. So you have to pick up these water pistols and shoot it. And they have a lot more fun in like the third person stuff, which I, I kind of like. I know there's some other games on like, like my friend was telling me about this game called Deceit on PC that's free. And it's a little more, it plays with like the first person stuff when you're doing that. And this plays well with it being a third person thing. There's a point where y'all you, you have to like throw cans into a trash can. There's like a uh, a number punch pad where you have to do the correct number. And as an imposter, you have a couple of different options. You can whack people and just shoot them. You also have one where it uh, like a banana dance party where you turn everyone into banana skins pretty much. So you don't know who anybody is anymore. So everyone's running around as a banana and there's music playing. I'm trying to remember what other stuff kind of showed up, but that stuff plays well enough. But when you get to uh, talking about who's the imposters and who is the other one, you know, since these are on consoles, you don't have like a cons, you don't have like a keyboard hooked up to it. You have like a um, kind of like a scroll wheel with four different options, and then you go and select different options from there. And it just takes a little longer in doing it on the keyboard. There'll be some options like I was in – you'll start off and you'll select someone else's name and then you'll select your name. And you'll be like, I was with number three in the engineering room. Or you'll say like this person is suspicious or this person is the traitor or I don't know if this person was or this person was faking tasks. But it takes a while to get used to where everything is and it is – it can be confusing to read the chat log of that at the same time as like trying to talk to people in the circle. So it doesn't really come out as that. So it makes it really easy to be an imposter and just mark everyone and not have anyone know who did it. And the banana thing fucks with it too. Cause you can murder someone really fast and pop that and then nobody will know what's going on. Or you can, you can still kill people while you're a banana. So it like, there's really easy ways for the imposters to win, which kind of sucks. But it gives you a lot of experience, which I was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, have people play this mode. It's neat. I would have liked to see Among Us costumes, which would have been way cooler. Maybe they'll do it at some point. Maybe they won't. Who knows? I think they're going for the bigger brands, and in a way, Among Us is their competition. Because they have also said, like, you know, I mean, they're a big company. They want to win, and they should have like do something with the among us game because that is great game but um they are definitely trying to create this space that kind of like has everything in it they want to be the last game standing they want to be the game that people log into where you know 10 years from now everyone's putting their vr headset and going into fortnite and living their second life and all that shit like i went to this other area that was like a player created like carnival where I was just messing around doing stuff and they're having these like music events and stuff. But it's okay. I want to go play. I'd rather play Among Us, but it's there. So yeah, I kind of think this um, just Fortnite Imposters, it's it's interesting what they do with the third person stuff, but I don't think it holds up to like w how much of like, like Among Us is set up on PC for at least like the like imposter picking situation i haven't played among us on ps4 or consoles yet i'm so i don't know what those phases are like but yeah it, it like we were saying it kind of feel it's 
like a f- weird rip off and but it's also kind of fits in like they kind of want this to have a little bit of everything and that's a really popular mode that there was some other game that had had it show up as well I'm, i can't remember what it was though i might have to look for it yeah well i mean it, it is just you know it is you know it's it is cashing in on like a really popular thing um and like riffing on it in the way because like Fortnite is is seemingly a, a pretty versatile like platform you know with the amount of like events that they have that range from you know they're, they're pretty wild music concerts to just adding in these modes to also like putting in sort of powerful characters like you know like when um, Thanos was in Infinity War I mean was in Fortnite yeah they they have some creative stuff where I there was a bunch of fan made levels like there's a, a one I went to is the most popular one that was kind of in the selection screen it was this giant like carnival that had like waiting lines for like some racing events and then some battle axe fights and like a um there's an there's like a paintball game in there they have like a bunch of interesting creative tools for that let players like make their own games and social spaces and stuff that I messed with when I did that as well because I hadn't saw it. The other mode I was thinking about was um, there's a Counter-Strike mod that's like Traders in Something Town. That's really good. You... Where you have two imposters and they'll shoot yeah, people. Yeah, I remember I remember seeing like old like Achievement Hunter Let's Plays. It's like Trader in Terrorist Town or something. Yeah, Trouble yeah. in Terrorist Town. I, I used to watch some YouTubers play it. It's an older mod. It's like people as early as like 2014 were playing it. But that, I hope that you see stuff like that. I think the first person view of doing stuff like that is fun. There's like a, a free PC game called The Seat that's also in that vein, as well as like the, uh, I think there's that PSVR game, The Werewolves Within, I think is what it's called. That a well, lot that of people like as well. I think is that movie. <laughs> is that Ubisoft movie? Oh, uh, yeah, I think yeah, that's it, based yeah, off the game. It's just based off a of werewolf, right? Like the core like thing of that movie is no one knows who the werewolf is. Um, and I've heard really good things. Yeah, about that movie. I think the game. Yeah, the movie, is called the same thing too. I want. Yeah, wanna, yeah I want to watch that movie. You know, it's like you have werewolf. You have I think mafia is another like iteration of it, but it is just like that same sort of structure. Yeah, the the PSVR one specifically is is Werewolves Within, like okay. the whole title. I wonder what the werewolf just because yeah, I've heard of Mafia before. Anyway, so that's cool. Um, yeah, the, it's fine in Fortnite. I I hope to see collaborations with Among Us. Maybe not. Maybe it'll be with a different studio. I mean, like, hey, they didn't want to do it with us. We'll go do it with this other game, and we'll show up in there. You know, that's always an option. Fuck it. There's yeah, a lot maybe. of games out there. Um, maybe I'm trying to think of like another game that'd be able to adapt it like that and their game set up or has skins like that. Um, speaking of games with skins and all that, man, hate this Halo Infinite shit. That's not a good transition, yeah. but this Halo Infinite shit bummed me out. Yeah, the, the news um, of what's not gonna be there. Oh, we're talking about news. I forgot. No, we can no longer. Home. I haven't finished No Longer to, Home. We can do that home. next week. I've like yeah. I got ninety minutes in. That's I'll say cool. like it's a game about a a non-binary couple, um, in like the last month as they're about to leave like a flat they lived in in London for or apartment I should say uh, apartment for an Amer- for our American audience. Um, they've lived in in London for like the final year of university and is about sort of leaving a space that you've worked really hard to make your own and the uncertainties that come from like just leaving university and like not knowing where you're going to go from there. Yeah. And this is like, this is the one that has like the yeah, panorama room. That's really cool. Yeah, like you, you rotate, rotate the room. around. Yeah, it's like a diorama. You get a view of like mostly doors and like other things that you can interact with. Um, it, it, it's really cool, and I'll have more to say about it like when I actually finish. I'm only like 90 minutes in. I got through like the first day, and it's like I'm really vibing with it. And that's pretty much all there is. So that'll be cool. I'm, I'm excited about to talk about that hopefully next week. But um, so Halo Infinite is not going to have – the bigger one for me is the co-op campaign at launch as well as Forge Mode, which I always in my mind was like, yeah, they'll probably put out like a Forge Mode 
a multiplayer editor later, but the co-op thing, I was like, wow. Because I was like, in my mind, I was like, oh yeah, this is going to come out and me and Austin are going to do this co-op campaign, but I guess I'm solo boloing it, you know? Yeah, like, I mean, I don't necessarily mind it in a real way. I mean, it's, you know, like the thing I've, I've always played through Halo campaigns by myself first before doing co-op. Um, you know, because I've done like, I've went through like all of the Halo games when Master Chief Collection hit uh pc by myself and then like my friend riley and i we went through it together we went through it together and i think you and i went through like one right like you and i went through combat evolved yeah i don't remember if we beat it but we definitely played a bunch of sections of one yeah. we might have played some yeah so like i do like one. i do a lot of like halo co-op after the fact like the bummer here is that there's not really like a, a timetable for when it's gonna happen and a part of me is just like thinks that they should kind of just delay the game uh but i don't think they can i don't think they can <laughs> no they need that they need this holiday yeah. update they uh they did say that there is going to be update one and update two that are coming out and i think yeah. co-op was so set like for update targeting one on some yeah they want but they haven't said when. to drop when season two of their sort of like multiplayer thing hits and forge is going to be season three um, but of course, the timetable for that is uncertain. Mike, like a lot of like a lot of things in COVID, where movies are getting pushed back to. It's like, yeah, I could see development of these updates be pushed. But so I, I was the opposite way. I've always gotten these Halo campaigns and played my first playthrough in co-op, which kind of like. I think I did that with all the one through three. That's how I played like Gears of War two. Those were like my fun social experiences and getting used to this game with someone else it's like me and my brother used to play him so i thought that kind of sucks for me but they in a way you know they're doing the co-op big open world thing so i could see it getting in the way or them having some problems with it you know they push the game back a year i don't know if they've been redoing graphics or pushing different stuff and trying to redo well, I mean, different yeah, like stuff the um yeah. like the the infamous uh showing of like infinite which i thought you know i thought for as far as 343 halo goes looked pretty much on par with what we've gotten um like the response to that gameplay demo that was revealed at an e3 you know which is where you get um craig right or not at an e3 but like the the 2020 like xbox showcase um is where you get like people saying that it doesn't look particularly good in its like graphics and then you get things like the uh, the Craig meme which is just the the brute like close up shot as it just looks like a sort of hairless gorilla yeah and i think after that they had lost a lead developer and then Staten had come back who was like someone who worked on the first yeah, like, three Staten games was big, like like his, the involvement he had with like the first three Halo games is pretty huge but I think, for me at least, I know a lot of people are really excited about the campaign. I think this game will continue on. Unless this this campaign is the fucking craziest, coolest thing with these crazy seasonal updates. I think the multiplayer is going to end up being more popular or like more of what I'm like looking at of how it's changing stuff. Because like, you know, Fortnite, it's free, it's big. It comes out, everyone can get on it. It's I think it's going to be like that for this. You have the crossplay, you have the free, you have it coming to PC yeah. and Xbox, cross save. It's yeah, going to like be cool. it, I mean, it's really just like the their focus on Infinite mostly right now seems to be like as a multiplayer fa platform, and like that's like that's fine. Like I think that's a good focus to have. Like people, there's a really good reaction to that technical test, you know, um, with how they were implementing bots. And like just general in general, how the game felt and the stuff that you could do with their new implements, like the grappling hook, like they got a pretty positive response from that. And like I, I am willing to like trust them on like pushing these features back, right? Like I think this game will be good. I think it's it's a bit of a it's a bit of a bummer to hear that these features have been moved back, but I think like I'm willing to trust three four three like with like what they're gonna release yeah and there is like a alt i th i'm pretty sure they're putting out the campaign the multiplayer this, yeah uh, you know the same time but there's a world i see it where like oh in you know 
fourth quarter or like you know winter they put out the multiplayer and then march they put out the rest of the campaign i could see that that could i could see that working because like you have this free thing a bunch of people are playing it and then the campaign comes out and you get this new batch of people who are playing it for the campaign and with game pass they get back in the multiplayer i don't think that's going to happen but that's definitely like something i don't see that many people wouldn't be angry about maybe microsoft because like you're not releasing that game in like for before christmas but then again you're also looking at like people are just on game pass playing it as well but there is like a there's always a big surge of people who buy it in the first like month worth of sales and then everything that's after that is like subscriptions and monetizations yeah. in a different like, way I, like whether or not they release extra chapters on the campaign post launch is kind of up in the air like infinite is supposed to be this platform right most more first and foremost as opposed to a individual release in the halo series so the idea that they will be releasing not like sections of their main campaign but like additions to the campaign post-launch is is a very real possibility and that's something that like we could see them do um yeah kind of like destinies like i would say like they put out their expansions once a year that are like what i would call major side stories that all have their contained story that you know i originally thought they're talking about there's like i have these waxes and wanes where i'm like this is going to be a destiny like where they're putting out these expansions then they talk about being free to play multiplayer and i'm like oh that's going to be the live stuff and i i yeah i hope it's both you know uh, a lot of the first like two years of when destiny came out was having this really cool multiplayer mode along with like these seasonal updates of like campaign content that they would mix together yeah. in a fun way where it's like yeah you have the new season or the new thing of halo coming out for the year and you've got a bunch of new skins for your characters a bunch of new weapon skins they're all like based around the um the dlc that's dropping and stuff yeah. so we know that they're going to do post-launch stuff and it could be it could be anything yeah it could be like because like they're they'll see how popular it is they they'll and then if they do have like a year one like campaign dlc they'll see how popular it is with that and they'll probably go from there did on a side note did you see the leaks that were coming out from uh destiny 2 that are like halo related they have like a 20 year anniversary for bungie i think it was or it might have been 25 for bungie 20 for halo and they're gonna have halo skins in talking about maybe having halo skins in destiny which is like master chief stuff for titans um odst stuff for the hunter and then i can't remember i think it was arbiter stuff for the warlock which if that's true i was like that'd be wild my it's kind of sound like rumors but i think that that's a that's like a fun thing yeah, if that I, goes through i don't know how much they can actually do because they don't own halo no no but i think they're still doing stuff with that's a thing with microsoft whether or not it happens i don't know i haven't played destiny in a year but i was just like oh that'd be cool if they could if that actually ends up being true who knows um other news i threw in there's this the apple epic lawsuit that's kind of still going on and we got some numbers about like there's a graph on here for all the uh those free games that epic store yeah. gives away and apparently 7 million people downloaded GTA 5 when it was free, which, I mean, doesn't it doesn't surprise me that that number is really big. I just didn't expect it to be I, that big. I, I don't know why you, you wouldn't. GTA 5 is um, huge. It, yeah, and you have this chart of, like, all the different games. It's, like, first Epic Store account actions or yeah. new users, which were the spikes, like Subnautica being free grab some people kind of wanes down and then it has like the borderlands 3 launch which is kind of small and then the arkham games i think were free and then gta 5 being free just popped it up and then you had a bunch of people grabbing civ 6 when it was free as well which that's a pretty big number on there too yeah. actually but i think that's cool i think 
I like how, I like looking at stats like this. Just it's like kind of like food for thought kind of stuff. Yeah, it's you know it's just the the way that Grand Theft Auto Five has consistently been one of, if not the biggest game, at pretty much every year since its initial release back in twenty thirteen is. It's very interesting. It's it's a lot. Yeah, and I don't there need I need like a deep dive in it. I need someone to tell me why it's this popular. I don't know if it's people are laundering money through it, <laughs> which is like a weird thing. Don't know GTA Online or that it's just a really nice open world that Rockstar has put out on PS3, PS4, Steam. You know, I mean last generation and current at this moment it's the last last generation last generation and then it's coming to the current yep. generation you know so hey hey good on them you know that's they also have a live service as it turns out it's gta 5 slash online which no campaign content for gta 5 which if that was paid i could see people doing that but it's probably easier just to do they probably ran the numbers and it's cheaper to just do the they, online stuff and they they're still making much, the same yeah. amount of money business shit like business they don't have shit. to worry about an expansion like, flopping in gta online no because they people just consume that stuff um which makes me like i i never played ballad of gay tony or the loss and the damned but you can get that you can get it like the physical pack of those for 360 and backwards compatible play them i don't know if they're on steam or pc at all but I could I could go play those GT four, never I never gave it the light of day because I thought it was like weird and wasn't San Andreas. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's not terrible. I don't I don't I don't have you know very like positive feelings towards like Grand Theft Auto in general. Um, uh, I'll say it's you know it it's very much of an era and it's probably not the worst thing Rockstar's written. I don't think there's like a section in GTA four where you uh like tattoo a penis onto a man's chest so you know it's probably better than five in that way yeah they these games have their ups and downs um yeah the complete edition is just on steam for 20 bucks and that's cool i might do that instead of um getting it on xbox i because i played it through the first time i thought new york was really cool and i thought like you living in your apartment and the way the apartment was set up was like it was like an interesting like 360 game and what like a next gen oh, yeah. rock star game would look like coming from like the ps2 yeah, i remember xbox when era. um the ps4 and ps and xbox one had just been announced there was a series of videos on the now defunct uh, GameTrailers.com that was about sort of an ode to that generation. And I remember the they brought on the Mega 64 folks, and I believe one of their the castmates there said that he had bought an Xbox 360 just because he saw that when you were playing GTA 4, if a police officer tried to pull you out of a vehicle as you were speeding off the officer would hold on to the handle of the door and be dragged for a little bit so it was a, it was a huge yeah thing. it was that, a huge thing for a lot of people yeah and there's a lot of those smaller details that were in four that like didn't make it into five there's some like interesting youtube comparison videos showing the differences between like gta 4 and 5 that i've watched a bit so yeah i think hey if i come back in a couple weeks and be like hey i beat all of gta 4 i'll probably talk about it a little bit but i don't i don't see that happening i played some san andreas though i did a mission i was like yeah this is san andreas and then i put it down uh let's see i um i did forklifting simulator and i put boxes into the back of a truck and i was like oh this is what people who play um Shenmue feel like I guess, and then but people were shooting at my homie, and it was um yeah you know yeah you had for to. life. Yeah. Uh, it was a time. Next uh, coming up, we're gonna be talking about Evan Gillian. So if you're here right now, listen to this. I hope you join us for that yeah. as well. 
The chamber of God. guff has been yeah. opened. I got thoughts. And we are. I got thoughts, and I got gonna conversations. Talk about the final and... two, and probably relitigate a good amount of the conversations we had about like the first two movies. Uh, yeah, because I rewatched one and two. I watched like half of one, and then I watched yeah. all of two I mean, and three. Yeah, we, yeah. I was gonna say some stuff. We can, we can say that. We can. Yeah, we'll, we'll jar these thoughts for when we come back to open open it up. We're gonna r- open Pandora's box here on Third um, Coast Gaming. Um, use the See key of Nebuchadnezzar. Unlock the chambers Don't say of that to me or my child ever again. Keith Nebuchadnezzar is a joke. Anyway, we gotta go.